Hey guys, it's Sunmin, and welcome back to Your Money Game, the show where we'll get better with saving, spending, and today it's all about the exciting world of investing in ETFs. Back in the mid 2000s, when I first got started in the stock market, the only thing I knew about were stocks. And only after I made the transition between being a trader towards an investor did I learn about and gradually start using ETFs. At this point, ETFs form the backbone of the way I invest. So I'm here to share with you today all about the interesting and exciting world of it, what type of ETFs exist, what are the key considerations that you should have or think about, and on top of that, for those of you who are investing in Singapore or Malaysia, there are some key factors that you should really understand, especially if investing in ETFs in the US. So let's dive right into it. So what is an ETF and what types exist? Well, ETFs were introduced back in 1993, but ever since then, they have seen an amazing amount of growth. I found a piece of research that shows that since 2009, the annual growth rate of ETFs are really second only to smartphones at about an 18% growth year on year. The term ETF stands for Exchange Traded Funds. And like the last word says, a fund can simply be thought of as a basket of different type of assets. What assets, you might ask? Well, pretty much any asset that you could probably think of. You've got your common vanilla stocks, you've got bonds, commodities, derivatives, and even a complete other field called alternatives. And some ETFs even mix a few of these type of assets together. And then there's the first two words of the term, which is exchange traded which simply means that they are listed on a stock exchange, much like how a stock is listed. Locally, we might be familiar with the Singapore Stock Exchange, or in Malaysia, you've got the Bursa, but when you go abroad into the US, that's where you have the most established and most reputable stock exchanges in the world. You've got the NYSC, the New York Stock Exchange, and then you've got the NASDAQ, which lists mostly tech companies. And in the US alone, you'll have about roughly 2,400 plus ETFs that are listed and the list continues to grow year on year. And because ETFs are listed, what's interesting about them is that the rules that they trade in are almost similar to how you can trade stocks. So depending on which stock exchange you're listed on, you can apply similar rules. And lastly, the reason why I'm so excited with ETFs are because of the themes that are available to us as investors. So if an ETF is a basket of different assets, the question becomes, what is the theme of the basket? What are the different assets that are going to be put into that basket that are presented to you as a gift that you could buy? You've got stock-based ETFs, bonds, commodities, and then you have sector-based ETFs. For example, you've got the tech sector, you've got healthcare, you've got oil and gas. Then you have ETFs that follow different styles of investing. For example, you have growth-based ETFs, and then you've got value. And then you've got a few more exotic types like leveraged ETFs and even inverse ETFs. And the list goes on. There are a few more over here that I probably haven't covered. So let's talk about the practical ways that you as an investor can use ETFs. I'll start with the first method that I'm personally fond of, which is index investing. ETFs provide you a cost-effective and easy way to start with index investing. For example, if you were interested in investing in the S&P 500, what you could do is buy the ETF SPY. It's currently listed at about 320 US dollars per share. If you're buying it on the US stock exchange, you can probably even buy it at a single share. And if you thought that, oh, that's a little bit too expensive for you, you wanted to start at a lower cost, there are even alternatives that are available. For example, SPLG, which currently trades at roughly $37 per share, and it's basically tracking the same index. Next, Say you're interested in a particular strategy, but you don't want to go through the hassle of building your own portfolio, using an ETF allows you to do so very simply. For example, I'm personally interested in growth of certain types of technology, which is why I own an ETF called ARK, A-R-K-K. In the basket of ARK, there are so many different components that if I wanted to buy them individually, it would take a whole lot of money and again, a lot of hassle to figure out what percentage do I own? How do I manage all of it? When do I buy or sell an individual component? It's also an easy way for you to have your current portfolio be exposed to different kinds of themes or different kinds of regions. For example, I believe in the growth of Asia, but specifically, I want exposure to China. So what I do is I use an ETF called KWEB, which again, it has a bit more of a tech focus, but it's specifically Chinese tech. So depending on the way you want to build and structure your total portfolio, 
ETFs allows you to have access or exposure to different asset classes and different regions as well. Finally, another way you can use them is you can choose to be as active or as passive as you want to be. My personal approach is I have a backbone strategy which I invest in for the long term, but at the same time, every now and then I might make a small trade or two, but that's really for fun. Another thing that you can choose to do is please the gods of YouTube by clicking on that like and subscribe button as well. So let's dive into the key considerations when you're thinking of choosing an ETF. The more active you are as a trader or investor, you should really pay attention to the bid and ask spreads. For really popular ETFs like the SPY, the price spreads are as small as one single US cent. A much smaller and less traded product like ARK, ARKK, has its price spread on average of about six cents. You could literally just look at the bid and ask prices. What you could also look out for are trading volumes, which as long as it's in the millions, it should be okay. The next important thing to pay attention to if you're investing in different kind of themes are that even though the title of the theme might be the same across different ETFs, the components within it might not exactly be the same. To give you a big example, there's VWO and EEM, both of which are classified as emerging market ETFs. Biggest difference is VWO does not classify South Korea as an emerging market. So even though the two baskets of ETFs track the same theme, one basket is missing completely one entire country from its allocation. The next important thing to consider are fees. And starting with the obvious and unavoidable one, you've got trading fees. And depending on which broker that you're using, yes, you will incur costs because you're trading them just like you're trading stocks. The next layer of fees are what you call an expense ratio. Just FYI, for very popular ETFs such as the SPY, you have really low expense ratios, usually in the 0.09%. So the general rule of thumb is the more niche the ETF theme is, the higher fees that you will end up paying. The other good rule of thumb to follow is that if you're looking to buy an ETF, if it's issued by a large and really, really reputable player, you are generally very safe. Anything from the top players that I'm listing here should be fine. And should you want to look at more niche ETFs, you really want to pay attention to the assets under management. In this last section, I'm going to run out a few key considerations if you're investing in ETFs in the US outside of it. So if you're in Singapore and you're in Malaysia, pay attention to these next few. First, specifically in Singapore, on the Singapore Stock Exchange, you can find an ETF like SPY that are listed. However, if you're choosing to buy it here, you have to realize that there's a minimum lot size of 10 units which means that at the current price of SPY of a roughly $320, you need to pay a minimum of US $3,200 for a single purchase. So that's a lot of money to put down with a single transaction. Next is that if you're investing outside of the US, you really need to pay attention to the type of taxes that you're hit with. Now, thankfully, if you're in Singapore, if you're in Malaysia, you are not hit with a capital gains tax. However, there is this thing called the withholding tax. And the withholding tax is important because it applies to what you call dividends or income. The current agreement is that we need to pay 30% of tax to any dividends that has been given out to us. Some of you might have heard of Irish domiciled ETFs, which allows you to save a little bit on those taxes. They charge you roughly a 15% withholding tax fee, but those type of ETFs tend to be listed in different type of stock exchanges, for example, like London or Germany. Thirdly, it's an issue that's not talked about a lot, especially if you're watching this channel because odds are you're a little bit on the younger side. However, it's really important for you to know about this thing called the estate tax. What it states is that if you are an investor with assets based in the US, and if you pass on, what happens is you are hit with a 40% tax on the value of those funds above USD $60,000. So of course, if you've got dependents and you've got family members, uh, this can be a huge shocker, which is very, very unpleasant. So if you're talking about planning your finances for the long term, this is something that you really need to remember as you age and as you go along. The final bit of awareness is that when you're investing in ETFs, especially ones that are listed in the US or a market other than yours, 
you should be aware that they are exposing you to currency risk. With the current turmoil in the markets and the devaluation of the US dollar, in the near term, I'm not too concerned, but this is something that I want to be prepared for as the years go by. So that was my guide to the exciting world of ETFs. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below in the comments and I'll try and get to it. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this and got value out of it. And I'll be back again next Sunday with another video on ETFs. So stay tuned for that. So if you're keen, you're interested and you like what I'm doing, feel free to click that like, subscribe, as well as that bell button. And until next Sunday, take care and keep playing your own game.